my name is Peter Lloyd Sherlock. I'm a professor of social policy and international development at the School of International Development at the University of East Anglia, which is in the United Kingdom. Um, and I, as an academic, I'm interested in a lot of different issues that affect older people in low and middle income countries, so basically developing countries, mm -hmm. um, including long term care, health and also uh, the economic situation, and pension policies for older people in those countries. Um, within um, my research, I've always had a particular interest in Latin America, and that's what I'm going to be speaking about today. Mm -hmm. So could you just very briefly tell us how long-term care is understood in Latin America? Because as we know, long-term care means different things in different countries and different regions. Yeah, sure. Um, it's always dangerous to generalise about any world region, uh, and everything I say today, you know, has a very large health warning in terms of the huge diversity across Latin America as a region, uh, as well as within Latin American countries. That said, I think there are some general uh, points that we can make about long-term care in Latin America. Firstly, and I suppose most basically, we can see that um, population ageing is relatively advanced in Latin America compared to other developing regions, um, and there are rapidly growing uh, numbers of people aged um, in later old age, um, and obviously that means that there's much um, uh, higher growing prevalence of care dependency, however you might define that, in the region. Um, and so there is a gradually emerging recognition, I think, across many societies in Latin America that the issue of long-term care um, for older people um, is starting very quickly uh, to become a very important matter. Mm -hmm. Generally speaking, it is still framed um, in terms of being a private issue for families to resolve themselves not as a public issue, either in terms of um, other actors and agencies being involved, and more widely in terms of um, whether um, this is an issue of common concern for society as opposed to something that families just have to get on with and deal with on their own private. Mm -hmm. um, so there's still a tendency to view um, the fundamental challenges of long-term care um, in that kind of way. There's a growing recognition, I think, among organizations which are interested in, in, in gender and the status of women in Latin America, that of course everywhere, including in Latin America, uh, that the greatest burden of family caregiving falls on women. Um, and I think some of those um, very well-developed organizations, feminist organizations in Latin America, partly because their own members are starting to, to experience these dilemmas and issues themselves, um, are, are starting to enter into this debate in a way that I think is very interesting. Mm -hmm. um, so there's a slow, um, gradual acknowledgement that this is a an issue in Latin America. But there is very little um, acceptance that this should be a high-level public policy priority in the region. Partly, again, because there is a common view that Latin American societies and families are fundamentally different to those of the West, that family solidarity is much greater, that it's extraordinarily stigmatized not to provide care to um, uh, older people when they need it, uh, and therefore that these informal institutions, broadly speaking, um, work much better than they do in the West. And if the state started to get involved, it would actually come out out responsible families. None of that's based on evidence, that's based on perhaps the view uh, of the world that policymakers would like to have. Mm -hmm. um, there's also concern, I think, among um, key policymakers in Latin America who can see the sorts of debates about the costs and the fiscal burden of long-term care in, in, in high-income countries saying, whatever we do, we don't want to open up another um, sort of um, leg of the welfare state uh, which is going to increase the fiscal burden, which is going to extend a sense of welfare entitlements in the context of, you know, rapid population ageing, increases in healthcare expenditure, then we're going to have to deal with this issue. So there's almost a, 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 a collusive approach here between lots of different stakeholders who, who like to continue to, to some extent, pebble a convenient myth 
that the family and women specifically are able to meet this growing challenge. People recognise the growing challenges there, but they say um, this is not necessarily something that the state or other kinds of social action should engage with directly. So as I, un if, as I understand, the long-term care doesn't have high priority, policy priority um, in the region, but if you could yourself introduce one policy to do with long-term care in Latin America, what would that be and why? Well, well things are very diverse, and in some parts of Latin America, I would say to some extent, for example, in Chile, uh, there's been a little bit of progress in mm -hmm. terms of developing um, uh, more meaningful interventions in long-term care, to some extent, the state support over the last five years. Mm -hmm. um, so I wouldn't want to say that that is the universal okay. experience across mm -hmm. Latin America. The same is true probably of Uruguay as well, and possibly Costa Rica. Mm -hmm. um, that in terms of the population of Latin America, those three countries don't add up to a very large proportion of it, of course. Um, in terms of policy, there's been um, a traditional approach um, where the state does get involved in a very minimal kind of way of providing care homes for the destitute um, elderly mm -hmm. um, in a charitable and essential kind of way, um, normally providing very small numbers of, um, of care homes, which are only able to deal with very small numbers of older people. Mm -hmm. um, and that is sometimes seen as, uh, and often providing those services in a rather, let's say, traditional kind of way. Um, um, and, and that's seen as the way in which the state engages with this challenge. And of course, the argument becomes, well, that's very expensive, and the state is simply not able to go, go further in its provision. Mm -hmm. There is much less um, awareness, although it's starting to change, that actually, um, you know, you have a whole spectrum of different kinds of interventions in long-term care in terms of supporting family members, not necessarily putting a whole people into care homes, mm -hmm. and doing lots of other things to include other people's capacity to remain in the community and to look after themselves. Um, and there's the beginning of a, a recognition among some public policy makers that this is clearly the way to go. The problem is that, of course, there's such a, amount, there's such a degree of debate and disagreement within high about the best way to do these mm -hmm. challenges, that there are not simple best practice policy packages that people can say, well, clearly country X in Europe stands out as a much more successful example of reconciling all the different challenges, fiscal challenges, well-being challenges, sustainable long-term care. Therefore, that's the way to go. Because clearly there isn't a success story that they, that they, 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 they mm -hmm. would associate with. And often policy makers in regions like that in America, where they have a pension policy or health policy, they would look abroad for um, examples of, 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 that, that they can draw upon. So they might look at the Netherlands and say, in many ways, the state has been very involved in long term care, uh, but now the state is reducing its direct intervention in long term care policy, mainly because of fiscal concerns, mm -hmm. uh, you know, within the politi political context of, of, of Europe. Mm -hmm. Over the last few years, the Danish state is doing the same. So, you know, on one hand, you can look at the infrastructure of care services and say, fantastic. But on the other hand, it would appear to be that these are not at least politically sustainable, if not economically sustainable. And policy makers in Latin America are very aware of that. Okay. So there's, 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 there's a lot of caution. Mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of reluctance to, to engage with this. And responsibility is generally default down to level and mm -hmm. uh, there's a sense that, well, um, you know, um, we will have a, a, a tokenistic uh, set of interventions at the national or federal level, but most of this responsibility will be devolved to um, local, mainly city governments. And often it's very hard to know what's going on there anyway, because information is very fragmented, mm -hmm. uh, data reporting is very good, um, and so you might find a very interesting case study about what's going on in part of Mexico City, but it would be extraordinarily dangerous to generalise about the whole of Mexico uh, mm -hmm. from that unique experience in one municipal region. So you started talking about the data collection and research, obviously. So what do you think is it, it's an outstanding piece of research that still um, needs to be done in Latin America? I guess there, there is probably quite a lot from what you said. Yeah, it's kind of such a vacuum 
into the terms. And, and there are so many ways, of course, that you can engage with this issue depending on, on what your wider interests are. Are you interested in the labour market? Are you interested in gender? Are you interested purely in human rights of older people? But in a way, not just as an academic, but as a policymaker, there are so many areas of engagement with this. Um, that, that you know where to begin because all of these areas um, are almost entirely data free. Mm -hmm. um, I think there needs to be more responsibility, more comprehensive responsibility for bringing these issues together. Uh, and I think at, at, at the level of, of national governments in Latin America, there needs to be a much more concerted approach to, in a multi dimensional way try to start putting together these very complex pieces of a very complex jigsaw uh, because otherwise you won't obviously be able to uh, set policy priorities and see the system long term care system as a whole mm -hmm. and it's a very messy system uh, so we, we need to be able to map this out at least to some degree rather than, rather than necessarily saying we're going to focus on this bit of the system or that bit of the mm -hmm. system I would say perhaps one particular entry point which I find interesting and important is one thing you see in Latin America a lot over the last 10 years is by default um, the private sector becoming much more involved in long term care, um, both um, on a rather more organised level for the rather wealthier Latin Americans, mm -hmm. but also you see the appearance of a lot of informal care homes uh, being run on a kind of mom and pop basis out of somebody's, um, you know, almost out of somebody's backyard. Uh, they have sprung up, particularly in many of the larger Latin American cities, almost entirely unregulated, being clandestine. It's extremely difficult to get information about them. But large numbers of um, frail and care and adult people in urban Latin America are now finding their way into these sorts of institutions. So nobody's responsibility. It's not the Ministry of Health, it's not the Ministry of Social Affairs. Everybody's turning it blind eye. Um, and so that would be an area that I think would be very useful to try and get information about. Something I'm trying to do at the moment in, in, in Argentina, I think it's very hard to get this information from a top down approach. I think you have to take a community level, grassroots approach to collecting this kind of information and actually working directly with all the people and their families themselves and, and, and almost do a kind of action research kind of um, approach. I think that's the only way that you can actually find out uh, what's going on in these sorts of uh, these unregulated care mm -hmm. So, um, I have a last set of questions which might be a bit difficult for you to answer since obviously you're talking about the broad region. Um, but I have a quick questions when I'm looking for an answer from 1 to 10 where um, 1 is low and 10 is high and please free to al um, elaborate on, on your answers. So first of all, how would you rate uh, what policy priorities allocated to long-term care in Latin America from 1 to 10? 2. It's very low. It's marginally higher than it used to be. So that's why I would give it a 2, because it, it, it it's sort of has increased over time, but it's still extremely mm -hmm. low. Okay, and how do you think um, if general public um, is aware um, about what the long-term care system can offer to them? Very, very limited awareness because the long term care system is not a coherent system. Mm -hmm. the information about it is extremely scarce and mm -hmm. poor quality. So um, I think one can assume that they know. Uh, you know and, and if you talk about a long term care system, what do you mean? Do you mean women looking after the people at home? Well, I guess they know about that, but if you mean something beyond the sort of default position of, of, of largely female family care, very mm -hmm. little. Okay. Um, how how well do you think the system supports people with long term care needs? Again, from no. one to ten. Very very poorly. Okay. So let's give that two and a half. Okay. Um, but it and also depends. In Latin America, you've got very high rates of inequality. Mm -hmm. uh, therefore, of course, uh, again another caveat that runs through all of this is that the experiences of wealthier older people are very different to the experiences of poorer older people. Mm -hmm. If you're a middle class Latin American woman, you won't provide for the care needs of your um, elderly parent yourself. You will get some young girl who's a domestic cleaner to look after them so you continue to work in the workplace. If you're from a very impoverished background, clearly you will not have those opportunities. In fact, you'll probably be the, the person who's cleaning somebody else's house and looking after their elderly parent.
Yes. And not being able to look past your own. Yeah, definitely. What about the needs of carers? How well do you think the system supports the needs of carers? If at all? Well, there's been some growth in the industry of training carers mm -hmm. in Latin America. Uh, most of that by the private sector. So now you get uh, people with some kind of nursing qualification, which is very marketable in uh, particularly in Latin American cities mm -hmm. these days. Um, I don't think this necessarily, it is a kind of pseudo professionalization that's taking place, and I don't think that necessarily reduces the exploitation of these individuals. Mm -hmm. uh, but the majority of carers are unpaid family carers, mm -hmm. and I don't think their needs are met at all by the system. Because, as a generalization, there's an all or nothing choice between going into one of these um, problematic, unregulated care homes and, and having complete institutionalization, or that woman doing everything for themselves for their family member. That's the experience, that's the dilemma that mm -hmm. faces the great majority of families in Latin America that get care home. Okay, and um, my last question is about the integration between the health and social care system and provision of um, long-term care. Could you um, assess that at all or tell us something about the integration in Latin America? Well, you know, I think it's a question that doesn't even apply in Latin America because okay. it implies that we have a quite good social care system. We don't. Okay. Of course, there are some issues that cross cut. So, you know, mm -hmm. if you take into dementia care. Um, you would then say how well are you know, services of diagnosing mm -hmm. dementia linked into aspects of dementia care that you might describe more obviously as social mm -hmm. care. Uh, and there are some small islands of very good practice, mm -hmm. uh, but I think it's very hard to integrate two things into one of those things doesn't really exist in the first place. Okay, so that was my last question. Thank you very much for your time today.